All right, y'all, time for another bit of Starbase summary here. Watching what's been going on out there around Starbase. Kicking it off with that SpaceX LR11000 crane. Rising up, it says it's got a Buckner boom now. They swapped in a different boom to potentially prepare it for lifting a different type of thing that doesn't need to go as high but is potentially way heavier. I guess we'll find out. Bunch of pumps over there. They really have a uh, row of pumps. We need like a, like, a, like a terminology for when you have like a group of pumps, right? Like a, like a murder of ravens or whatever. Crows and a, like a herd of deer. A plethora of pumps. That's not great. Help me out. You have a lot of pumps. What is it called? There is more legs. I guess is that the fourth leg? Because I three, see three other legs up there uh, going in over at that second OLM. Back at the production site, that's a turntable, and the hold downs for the turntable are being removed. Are they upgrading it, or are they just changing how they attach, or what exactly is going on there? I wanted to talk more about the legs on the launch mount, but uh, here we are on the turntable video. Remember the turntable they just took out of the Mega Bay, if I remember correctly from the last video, and uh, they used that to spin the ship parts around, the booster parts around, as they're being assembled over there in one of the uh, corners, if I'm not mistaken. Nice wide view of the production site. Look at the cool shadow effect on the side of the Star Factory there from the uh, setting sun going through the checkerboard in the old high bay that they're cutting up. There's Pad B's launch mount. Does look like they're starting to prepare that, maybe related to the crane reconfiguration. There's the high base, still cutting those holes out of it. I did see tons and tons of comments that the, I think I mentioned this last time, most likely for wind stability. Yeah, some slow motion sparks. Uh, if you leave that on there, it's not so much center of mass. Potentially this is to let the wind blow through the pieces. They've taken the top off the high base, so it's less structurally stable. It doesn't have those bracing parts on the top. And maybe that makes it a little bit less likely to blow over or crumple in the wind. Here's that flame diverter cap over at Pad B going on top of the two sets of brontosaurus ribs, the flame bu bucket piping that they installed. And then here's a different type of hold down. We didn't, or we saw the uh, hold down arms over on the turntable. This is much bigger, bound for the second launch mount. A couple of these been sneaking around, and exactly how they pivot and clamp around, you can sort of see where some of the holes uh, create pivot points or joints on those things. Jumping back over to Pad A. Man, you know, Pad A is going to look like old school and kind of busted, honestly, when they get Pad B going. Like, Pad B is going to be the new no pun intended, hotness, especially after they do an engine test on it. I'm proud of that one, uh, but <laughs> the Pad A is going to look old and just like rusty, not maintained, like the dirty underbelly of Cloud City with all the little pipes and stuff hanging down. In any event, there you can see one, two, three, four legs for that launch mount. Good information in the last Starbase update, if you saw Jack um, and the rest of the reporting team putting together the information there that's the sort of uh more organized <laughs> more scripted more complete is probably a fair thing to say a set of commentary where jack was talking through how that might be useful to have those standardized bolt patterns and placements in case you ever need to upgrade or change out a mount not like a quick swap sort of thing but uh, cool that there's some standardization there that's just a little uh, wall plate that they were putting in. I, I don't really feel like I need to talk about that too much. That's like a, uh, it's just a little plate going in between the legs or if it was going down to the trench. There's the Deluge Farm, those huge green pipes we've seen sitting around in storage if you saw some of the aerial shots on our last Starbase update. And then there's some more valve actuators the big red part at the top and then the little stick that goes down into the uh, cryogenic part so that your moving valve parts don't get frozen by the super cold cryogenic propellants that you're working with in the the gray pipe that's down on the bottom there interesting design the way that this th the that whoa wow well, geez the way that those things work no do-overs we got to keep going forward there you go there's a really great shot of it 
You see how the machinery, like the moving parts sort of are up on the top of the red thing, and then you have like the little stick that's a, almost an insulation. Not really, it's more of a distance thing than, a, than an insulation. And then you have the pipe that fluid would flow through and sort of a valve set up in there that also moves, but it's not the uh, motor or actuator or whatever, right? All in all, this is just another piece in the wall going out over there at Pad B. Is that... That's like going on either side, it looks like. All right, anyways, back to the turntable. All the clamps removed from the top of it, a nice clean clean turntable design now. There's a test fit for the hold down arm, the huge hold down arm we saw delivered. That looks a little smaller now. Is that the same hold down arm? Like a person for, like pick that up while the people are next to it because it, it distance with the other things in the foreground, it looks smaller. Oh no, it looks big. Okay, yeah, it's big. <laughs> we saw that on the flatbed truck. Uh, here's that housing construction again. Caesar's getting over to get some shots of these. You can see they have the uh, concrete structure, like a concrete beam structure, and then uh, lifts up the, should I say, the main living area because you get storm surge, hurricane comes through, you don't want it to wash it out. Sometimes they'll finish the bottom of those houses out there, and it'll be like garages or storage or, or something that's not the fanciest part of your structure in case you do get storm surge that comes through. Caesar, Caesar also getting a couple wide shots of the production side over here. There's the rocket garden. Booster 17, booster self, and ship 20. Twi booster what? 12. I think I said shelf. That's kind of what the rocket garden is, though. It's like you're putting the rockets on the shelf. Shelves. Whatever. SN2 test tank 16. Also just sort of taking up space over there. There's that uh, Starlink building in the right-hand side with all the dome structures on. Oh, well, I guess we're just going to zoom in on that. And show it specifically in the center of the frame. I don't have to talk about it on the side of the frame. It's right there in the middle of the video. Anybody want to play the most complicated and per potentially dangerous game of tic-tac-toe? It's like it's not a 3x3 three three square. It's a, I don't know, somebody count those. <laughs> it's a little ground fabrication building at the very edge of the production site. This is sort of the first building you encounter on your left-hand side as you uh, approach Starbase. And it has a huge door that sort of swings up, gives them some shade and uh, structures to work within while they're out there uh, assembling things and keeping things together where they don't need as much space as a high bay, mega bay, or the entire yard, right? There's just another shot of Pad B's launch mount. Going to get that from a couple different angles. Of note here, a lot of the holes seem to have been covered up, right? Scaffolding, scaffolding's still in place, but uh, we're not seeing as many openings. So uh, some of those are getting connected to piping. Some of them are being uh, potentially closed off to prevent FOD from getting inside while they transport and or install it. Might be a good guess. As to what's going on, I guess we'll see. Still waiting for that scaffolding to come down, though. It will be quite interesting when, this, when we see the scaffolding start to be removed and we start looking for road closures. We look to see cranes in all the proper positions. Uh, the legs are already in place. Of course, we saw that earlier in the video. This thing is going to be nuts when it rolls out. There in the foreground, the sort of circular structures, booster transport stand, freed up for the potential transport of a booster. Miscellaneous tanks here. Almost looks like the back of a cryo truck, but I didn't see the wheels of the cryo truck. In any event, Mega Bay 2, Ship 37. A lot of tiles missing still from Ship 37 there. That's been sort of a topic of conversation lately. Where do the tiles come from? How quickly can they make them? Are they running out of tiles? Do they need to make more tiles? Uh, is sourcing for raw materials of the tiles causing a problem? Did they change a formulation and throw a bunch of tiles out? Um, I'm just sort of rapid firing a bunch of things that might be true, but uh, it's been curious that we have seen some missing tiles. I said not some missing tiles, seemingly lots of missing tiles. All right, test tank 17 in air quotes there. It's a little bit tough to see through the uh, window there, especially during the daytime. The nighttime shots are much easier to see. Some more shots of the crane sort of working inside the disassembling high bay. Then we're going to run on down the road to Pad B. 
The nice clean chopsticks, the nice clean tower. There's the nice clean shielding there on the top. It hasn't been blasted by raptor flames yet. Oh, it will be soon. It will be soon. Now that's interesting. This is like a, like a beam they've placed across. I wonder if that beam is going to stay there, or are they testing the specific distances or something like that? I feel like you could use a laser or something, but is that like a test jig? Maybe it's an alignment jig of some sort? Did it just make a beam that has holes in it in the same position that the mount has holes, and they're going to see if it works? Like, does that beam actually fit, uh, given the known measurements? I guess we're, we're going to carry some parts up. Man, that's really starting to beef up the uh, inside of the gantry there. Look at that. I really, I, I really, I said this in the last video. I really look forward to seeing that thing all shielded and enclosed because it's going to look uh, super futuristic. Some orbital tank farm deliveries. Could not tell what those were. There was a label on them, but I don't, didn't see that, like, we jumped forwards to uh, see exactly what that label says. Well, since these are a note about it. There's some side hardware, Pad B side hardware. What is that, like hardware on the side of Pad B? We've, in, we've uh, zoomed in on one of these before. The 500 millimeter, 20 inch, etc., etc. Just all the different bits and bobs of GSE that they use to uh, manage all the fluids. This here, is that is it still being transported? Is that still on a table? It doesn't look like the bottom was it attached to anything. And a deluge pipe being delivered as well by Abel. Because his name's on the truck. You can see it right there. Can you imagine the level of coordination that has to go into, oh, we're going to make this pipe in this other facility, and then we're going to transport it over here, but it's got to fit in. Like, I wonder how much reshaping they have to do, right? It's like, oh, pretty close. Oh, right, here. That was on the ground, and now they're moving it around to install it over here. And you'll see the little... Pillar is going to match with the little leg on the little platform that it was sort of pre-assembled on. Neat. There's another one of them, seemingly uh, also set up with the same sort of configuration. Ah, it wouldn't be a Boca video without the roundabout. It's going to be work continues on the roundabout. Now, I'm surprised it's not a little smoothed over there, but I'm happy to see the rebar and stuff in there. Uh, is it bigger? It still looks small to me. I need to go and visit it in person to see exactly how big that thing is. But that's going to do it for this Starbase summary. We watch some raw footage that comes in. We talk about what we think we see. Maybe we'll see if uh, Adrian and Alex can get a chance to do it in their respective languages as well. My name is Das or John. You'll see me down in the comments. I do read all the comments and respond to ones that I think are clever. But for now, appreciate you watching, and we will see you nerds later.